Hi guys, it's John here and this is a speed test between the Exynos 2200 and the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. So on the left here we have the Exynos 2200 and on the right we have this Snapdragon. So what we're going to do today is test out the speed between these two phones and what we'll do is run through a gaming startup test. We'll run through some apps and see which one's open quicker, do some memory management, do a bit of video editing and a speed test right at the end. So if you've seen my previous speed test videos you'll know that we're going to be controlling this setup with a click of the mouse. So we're going to plug in the USB-C mouse adapters here and then we'll be actually starting the apps with a click of the mouse so that we can ensure that we're pressing it at the exact right time. We can see the mouse buttons are being pressed at the same time if we do a check inside Antutu. So we know that we're going to have an fairer test as possible. Okay so we're going to start off with the boot test first. And the first point there goes to the Exynos. So we're going to make sure everything's out of the recently used here. And we've got everything set up exactly the same, same network, got the same settings enabled on both. So we'll start off loading Call of Duty Mobile. We see currently on the Exynos we can only select low and high, so I've set it to low and high on the Snapdragon as well. Hopefully that will get fixed in the next update of the game, but all the other settings are exactly the same. Now Call of Duty doesn't let you click with a mouse, certainly not when you're in the game, so what I'm going to do is start a practice AI match on the hijacked map on both, and we'll just see how long they take to get into the game. So that's another win there for the Snapdragon. So we're now going to load up Genshin Impact and see how that does as well. Now these are both the 12GB of RAM model as well, just so you're aware, with 256GB of storage. So the Exynos got to the starting screen first, let's uh, click to load up the next section. And we'll just click again to begin. I have loaded these to the same location on the map so hopefully it will uh, be the same amount of things it needs to load up. and it did load up a lot quicker on the Snapdragon. Now these are also on the same graphic settings here. So I've got them both set to medium and 60. So next up we're gonna load PUBG. And again, these are both on the same graphic settings here. Smooth and high, smooth and high. 
because this is the max we can currently set on the XNOS. Don't forget these options just need to be updated by the developer of the game and then they'll both be able to do Smooth Extreme or Ultra HD and Ultra hopefully in the future. Currently we're going to leave it as smooth and high. So again, another win there for the Snapdragon. We did actually get into the same game, funny enough. Next up, we're gonna load Fortnite. Again, another win there for the Snapdragon. Okay, so Fortnite's not the best game to test because it does take quite a long time and it's a bit random to find a game. So we're just gonna come back out of here. And now we're gonna test out the memory management between the four games here. So anything that's still in memory will be awarded a point. Anything not in memory will obviously not be awarded a point. So let's see what happens. So these are both in RAM still. It was obviously timed out because of the fact that there was no movement in the game. Let's try Genshin as well. Genshin is also in there on both phones. It is just reconnecting to the server though, which is what it's doing here. So still there on both. PUBG. has gone from the Exynos, but it's still there on the Snapdragon, so that's a point to the Snapdragon. Let's check Fortnite. And it is still there on both. So we're gonna clear out of everything now, and we're gonna move on to the app test here.
Okay, so let's just go back through the memory management now and we'll just see which of these apps are still in RAM. We're not going to bother with the camera, so we'll just go straight to Amazon Prime. So overall memory management for apps is really good. They both kept everything in RAM with no problems. So what we're gonna do now is move on to the video editing test here. So what we're gonna do is just edit this video and just apply a filter. We'll save it and just see how long it takes the phones to encode it. So we're gonna stick with the warm filter here and I will click this at the exact same time. Okay, and we're gonna do save a copy. Okay, so there's a huge difference there in the encoding video part. We're nearly three minutes quicker than the Snapdragon finished. So really disappointing from the Exynos there. Didn't heat up or anything. It was a similar sort of temperature, 36 degrees. But yeah, really disappointing at how slow that encoding was for the 2200. Okay, we're gonna come out of everything now and then we're gonna run the speed test and we're gonna do a test at a time just to see how the Wi-Fi is doing. I will just point out my download speed is 60 and my upload is 20 max, so anything around those areas should be good. Okay then, so overall a win for the Exynos just about. Now I don't take this one too seriously, obviously the test results of any Wi-Fi Test will vary very greatly indeed but uh, yeah overall it did score higher on average both on up and download than the Snapdragon. Okay then so overall a nice little win there for the Snapdragon. So not a huge amount in it in most of the tests but when it came down to the encoding and the loading of the games it was just always quicker on the 8th gen 1. So there's plenty of catching up for Samsung to do with the Exynos 2200 and hopefully we'll see that over the coming months. But overall at the moment, the Snapdragon is the winner. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't take it too seriously. It's just a bit of fun. In your normal day-to-day -day usage of either of these phones, you won't notice any difference, apart from obviously if you're encoding a video on your phone. But don't forget to subscribe because we will be doing a battery drain test next, and then we'll be doing a camera comparison test as well. So hit the bell notification to be notified when that comes out. And if you've got any questions or comments, leave them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. And again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.